had a really good childhood, a, a great time in school. Um, my dad's a retired sheriff. Oh, you come from a sheriff yeah, family at right. that. Yeah. So well, I law think. enforcement. I had a lot of uh, issues what, with what the law. What happened, Amy? Do you think it had anything? <laughs> you think it had anything to do with maybe you're pushing back towards business. the family? Yeah. Is that what it was? A lot. Yeah. And not- um, just had a struggle with authority. Uh, I didn't really have a realistic idea of um, consequences either. Uh, I didn't know, you know, you do things and you get in trouble, and you're gonna pay price prices. You're gonna. And, and what? Why did you? Why do you think you don't have an idea? Because it would be like. Like, Leaning on you too much, or lack of discipline from your mm-hmm. from your parents? Yeah. Welcome to the Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Remember that the Father's Day is now on locals. Dot com. So click the link in the description to help and continue to support our work. I appreciate it. I have with me Amy Ichikawa. She is a former inmate and executive director and founder of Woman to Woman, a community of uh, previously incarcerated women providing resources, education, and support service for system-impacted women. That's amazing. Uh, Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, Did I pronounce your last name right? Yes, you did. And and so you're part what? Japanese. Japanese and what? White. Really? Mm -hmm. So can you speak up a little louder for me? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're part Japanese and part white. Yes. Which side is Japanese and which side is white? Uh, my father is Japanese and my mother is white. Oh, okay. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So that's why you have a Japanese tattoo on this side? I think, y- yes. <laughs> yes, that's why. Uh, and so what was it like growing up part Japanese and white? What was that like for you? It was a little uh, confusing sometimes. Um, I, I never felt that I fit in yeah. to either side uh, enough. Um, which is why I think I started my search at a really young age, just looking for somewhere to belong and something to be a part of. But other than that, it was great. My parents were great. My father's a retired Los Angeles County Sheriff, so. LA County Sheriff? <laughs> really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, would you recommend that people get together and make interracial children? Yes and no. I, I think it's it, it's not easy. It's not easy when you don't have some place to belong, and it does yeah. lead to a lot of other issues uh, growing up. It leads to a lot of identity issues, a lot of issues that people are having today. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you love who you love, and you got to have kids with who you know you partner with in life. But it is de- there are definitely going to be some um, hurdles yeah. to jump. Going through what you have gone, are you able to hear Bill? Yeah. Is she louder? Yeah. Okay. Going through what you have gone through, would you make interracial children? Yes, because I can't imagine finding uh, another Japanese and white person <laughs> that um, would r- really be suitable. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you so? Do you even know any other Japanese white? Have mm-hmm. white, have Japanese kids? Yes. When you're age or you grew up around them? Um, um, <coughs> most of my cousins are, are Japanese and white. Um, there's a, a, a lot. I just never hung out with very many. Oh, I see. What was it like growing up with your father being the sheriff of L.A., L.A. County? It was interesting. Uh, I used to go to work with him on Take Our Daughters to Work Day. Uh, I never thought that I would be on the other side of the law. Uh, I was already familiar with the layout once I got arrested. Uh, he was a, a, a role model, you know, he was a good guy. He was there for me and um, he came to uh, show and tell, you know, look at my dad. Uh, he was 
he was there and it, it was helpful. Really? So what drove you to do crime to the point you would end up in jail? Were you in prison or jail? I went to prison. You went to prison? I did go to prison. What the? It was not amazing. Um, I was on that hunt. I was searching. I needed some validation. I would seek it out in toxic relationships, and I just was making those strives to be the worst, best of the worst. Um, you intentionally did that? Yes, I, I, I would seek danger. I, uh, I just didn't feel that I, I had something that was my own, so I was going to create, I guess, chaos, and really? that's what mine was. And you knew what you were doing? I knew what I was doing. And if your father was good, mm -hmm. were your mother good too? Yes. So if both your parents were good, why did you need to seek out something? Uh, Why would you complete it already? I, there still wasn't. I, I, I didn't feel whole. I didn't feel full. And, uh, you know, looking back in hindsight, I, I know that it's because I, I was running from the Lord this whole time. Running from what? The Lord. I was just running from the Spirit. And I, I just didn't, I didn't want to hear that call. I just wanted to keep going and being independent and doing whatever I wanted to do. And would your father and mother try to stop you? Yes. And you would do what when they say, hey, you need to stop, slow down, don't do this? Don't, no, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Were you <laughs> I a know teenager? everything. Mm, uh, actually, it was, it was in my early 20s. I waited until I was 24 to really start a full on life of crime. At 24? Mm -hmm. But what was wrong? Uh, I was in a very toxic relationship, a really, really dangerous relationship. Uh, And I really wanted to make this person happy, and I didn't um, see a way out of it. I had already made so much of a commitment. Might as well just run, run with it. Uh, and I was sad. I was lonely, and I, I didn't um, have anything stopping me from doing it. You know, I didn't have any commitments or uh, like kids or or any reason to not go hard. So you were in love with someone? I thought. I think I right. was in love with being in, in, in love. Right. And you were trying to hold on to that person? Mm -hmm. So you were doing these things to satisfy them? Right. Well, I, I was scared at some point, too. Oh. Uh, like the, the night I was arrested, I just, I was afraid. Um, were you concerned the impact it was having on your father by him being the L.A. County Sheriff? Not at the moment, no. Really? Not at the you moment. You didn't think about that at all? No, not until uh, <laughs> I was being interrogated and they found pictures of my father and I on my phone. And they said, oh, we know this guy. So they found his, your, your father on the phone. That's how they found out. Mm -hmm. What did your father say when he discovered you were in, in prison? He came directly to lock up uh, the, the following morning. And they told him you know, what had happened, and he said, what did, what happened? You, you just told on yourself? <laughs> and I said, yes. They said I was never going to see you again, so, yeah. Wow. Are you able to say what type of crime? Um, it, at the time, it was a long list. Uh, at the time of my arrest, it was, it was false, it was kidnapping for ransom. Really? <laughs> Which is a little, except. What the? Uh, you kidnapped somebody for money? Well, no, they didn't have any money. That, that There was a debt. There was a, a debt. Oh, they um, owe. $20. $20? <laughs> Poor thing. She's, and I feel terrible. You know, she's probably got the worst PTSD ever. But that's um, what it was over, a small debt. And so that led to the kidnapping charge and uh, false imprisonment. And, um, and this was all during the course of a, of a, of a robbery of the charges. I think there were about eight. Um, so it was dropped down to terrorist threats, which is now criminal threats, and a gun enhancement. Whoa. Were you, like, surprised at yourself? Were you surprised you had gotten to that point? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I didn't have a history of violence or criminal behavior, well... 
maybe criminal thinking, but I didn't ever see myself getting to this point where I was facing life. I, I, I mean, my first offer was 25 to life. So yeah. I, I wasn't understanding the consequences. I didn't understand that there were consequences for heinous actions like the ones that I acted out. Uh, I needed to understand and get a crash course in reality and yeah. crime and punishment and consequences. And it was, it, it was a gift, it was a total blessing. I don't think I would be here if it wasn't for the time that I was given. To How long were you in there? Uh, five years. Five years. And so your father, was he disappointed in you? He was sad. He was sad. He was disappointed, but he was and still is extremely supportive. He um, went to see me once, twice a week in county jail the whole time I was county, uh, fighting my case. He um, visited me once a month. He and my mom would come up once a month the whole time I was in prison. Uh, he just, he, he never, he never hesitated. He was just there. And how about your mother? It was really hard for her to digest at first, to really even look at me. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by that? Uh, after my arraignment, for her to hear what happened that evening was, it, it was horrifying. You know, she did not think that uh, someone that she raised could do something so ugly. And, and I, I understand. It was hard. She, she really had to work on it before. So she was angry at you? I don't think she was angry. She was, um, I would say, hurt and disappointed and maybe disgusted, but not angry. <laughs> <laughs> disgusted. And so she couldn't look at you? Not in the beginning. So she was like this? She, uh, yeah. Well, she didn't come the first couple times. Like, and even when I got to prison, it, it took her um, for my dad to come see me a couple times by myself before she could take that trek. What did that feel like for you? Uh, How did you feel about that? It was pretty, it was difficult. It was difficult to hear that, to understand that, and to know that I had done something that made her feel that way. That at the moment, it didn't feel very unconditional. Right. Uh, it, was, it was difficult. Amazing. It took me a long time to see the part that I played in all of that and be able to work it out with her. Amazing. And so did you end up losing this person that you were trying so hard to oh, keep? Oh, yes. Yes. Me, yeah. <laughs> Any kids? No, sir. No kids. Why you didn't have kids? Um, I don't know because I did want them. Um, I feel like my ship has sailed. That window is closed. If if it was going to happen, I try and think. Oh, it, it was. My birthing years were in prison, but it just never it never happened. So you tried to have kids, but it just didn't work. Right. You tried to get pregnant, but it, it, never. It, it Yeah, well, I tried a lot of stuff, but it, it, it never happened for me. Oh, okay. Um, and so what was it like in prison? At first, it was very intimidating. Uh, you know, I'm a new kid on the block, first time I had been arrested. Uh, and it was very hot. It was very reminiscent of hell. As soon as I got off that county jail bus, it was 112 degrees. Where were you? Chowchilla. Oh, okay. So the hot wind and the dust comes up, and I was like, oh, it's hot here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It was very dehumanizing because during that period of time, there, there was a lot of strip searches. So just coming from county jail to the prison, I, you got to get stripped out multiple times. And these are not, like you see on TV, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of nudity. It's a lot of horrible things that you're having to be subjected to numerous times right. a day. So that kind of was breaking me down, getting me um, to kind of detach from the idea of, of my personhood. I, did, you be, did you cry a lot? 
<laughs> you cried a lot? <laughs> I did. I did. For the first two years, I think I just cried. <laughs> <laughs> and did you eventually become a badass? No. <laughs> um, no, but I did learn the, the works, the inner workings. Uh, I wasn't the new kid anymore. I, the, I had known staff for years. But by the time my third, fourth year rolled around, I, I had found a rhythm uh, and understood the way the game rolls a little bit better than when I first. So, like, did you get into fights and things like that? I got beat up. You got beat up? <laughs> mm -hmm. But you never, you, weren't, you didn't start fights. No, no. But why did you get beat up? Uh, well, women, women's prison doesn't have the same type of politics as men's prison. It's, a lot of it is just emotionally based, um, emotionally charged situations. And uh, I just didn't, there's a lot of people that, that need support financially. So they meet friends that have financial support and they take that financial support. And I... I was well taken care of. My parents sent me a lot of boxes. They made sure I had money for canteen. So I was a mark. It was easy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at one point I just got tired of it, and that's when I got my face broke. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got tired of giving your stuff to them, and, mm -hmm. and that's when they beat you up? Yes. Did you fight back? Yes. But you didn't win? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Were you surprised you didn't win since you were so tough on the outside? No. You were not? <laughs> no, no. Did you join groups? Yes, there's different, like, cars. There's different little families. Uh, women tend to um, cultivate little pretend of families. There will be a mom and a dad and kids. And, uh, you know, I'm other, so I just would go wherever I wanted to go. <laughs> right. Um, anybody that would take me, I would, I would go... Uh, and then the last leg of the race, I was like, I just got to get out of here. It's time to go. Did, uh, so there would be, they would create false family, mm -hmm. like, and, and a woman would play father, and another one would play wife to the father, mm -hmm. and, and another one would be the kids. Mm -hmm. So were you the kids? I was always a kid, yeah. You were the kid. So which group did you fit in since you're both white and? Oh, none, like, fully. Right. <laughs> no group fully. Uh, I mean, I, I got along with pretty much everybody. Um, it would just depend on what, what room I was in because there are eight-man cells or eight-person cells in that prison. So you, you create a network with your roommates because oh. you're really, I mean, in a tight space with all of them. Amazing. You, did you get anyone to protect you? You know how they get, I think they always have somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> there were some, some younger, some little tiny people that, that um, <sighs> there was a little tiny one. She, she would say, I'm, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight for you. It was, a, it was the sweetest thing. Uh, but not, not really. I didn't have like a, oh. you know. Um, it's weird that an Asian is in prison. <laughs> Asians don't go to prison, right? Not really. So the white side of you went, but not well, the Asian part. The whole, it, it was all me. I, you know, both sides of my family are not criminally uh, involved or system impacted at all. I, I really was very independent with this. Really? I, I, because I had a great upbringing. I had a very, very strong grandparents that were extremely influential, but yeah, I'm feeling the impact now. I just tried to ignore it when I was running the streets. But now, uh, all of that is starting to really come to fruition. I'm, I'm able to finally use it. Uh, but I just was ungrateful and um, just trying to be somebody I wasn't yeah. all are those you, years. Were you, are you an only child? Yes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's not good. No, I think that has some stuff to do with it, too. Yeah. Very spoiled. So are you still spoiled? Not like I was, yes. <laughs> what the? And so, I, I think I heard or read where you, say, you said that uh, the, there are a lot of lesbian stuff going on, like lesbian sex things, right? 
that happens. More so than the men prison? I have no idea what goes on in there. I don't know if they're lesbians in the men's prison. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but it's not, uh, you know, people are so relational and women do have a tendency to be dependent on the validation in a relationship. So everybody feeds off of each other. Yeah. And some people need that to get through their time. So there is some, a lot of people are gay for this day. Uh, they just need that to, to right. get through their time. That's because women are very emotional, so they need to feel like they're being loved and giving love. Mm -hmm. What a mess, huh? It's a mess. <laughs> a mess. And so you started this group called Women to Women, mm -hmm. Woman to Woman. Did you do this while you're in prison or afterward, after you got out? After. Um, how are you doing now, you emotionally? How are you doing now that you've gone through all of that? I'm a mess. I'm a little better. I think I'm, I'm just now starting to process. I didn't realize how, how much I had really packed into those years and suppressed. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know I had PTSD. These things are, are just, I'm finally becoming aware and, and opening my mind enough to, to understand there's a lot of work to do because I can't help anybody if I can't right. help me. And so you're a mess. Uh, what do you feel like in, inwardly? Describe what you're feeling pretty much on a daily basis. Um, uh, some days, like the last week, have been very full of despair. There's so much that happens and th it happens so fast. It's hard to keep up with it. There's Every day there's, there's something new from the opposition. There's some new uh, sinister plan. Uh, there's something else being manipulated. There's uh, another group that's taking advantage of the incarcerated, and it, it, it gets heavy. So they're still bothering you? Mm -hmm. They're still bothering you? That does bother me. But if you have done your time and you're out, why don't they leave you alone? Those feelings? The, oh, you, it's the feelings mm -hmm. that you have. It, it, you don't have physical people coming after you. No, well... I mean, no, I, I've been, my organization has been a, a, attacked, like in the media. Uh, my character has been highly questioned uh, by people within the community of the nonprofit industrial complex. Uh, I mean, I've been called a, a white supremacist, uh, those kind of things. You've been called that? Yes. Why? Mm, I think, well, I'm a Christian conservative and, uh, oh, I see. you know, I don't, I don't have any funding, so I don't have to uh, push anybody else's agenda. Right. So I say what I want and I, I say the truth and I try and act as the mouthpiece for the women inside who've been silenced. So uh, it's not what I'm talking about. It's what they're talking about. Right. And so you feel despair, a feeling of despair? Sometimes. What does that feeling feel like? Um, it's so ugly and sad. Uh, I really have to focus in the morning to shake it off because there's so much work to do. I can't let those feelings control what I do through it, throughout a day. There's so much that needs to be done. Do you feel like giving up at times? No. You never feel no. like giving up? In your despair, you don't feel like giving up? Mm -mm. It, it, it gets close, but I know that that's not an option. It's, we, we already won. I just have to show up every day and keep pushing. And uh, do you ever contemplate suicide? No, no. You, have you ever? Um, I, I'm sure as a, a young, young person, yeah. or I would at least yell it out of, you know, to, for attention, but uh, no. You'd be like, I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What the? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, okay, go ahead. I don't care. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> But you, this was the 90s. It was different. You could say stuff. And you changed your mind then mm -hmm. when they didn't care. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> and so you, so you provide resources, education, uh, and supplies. What type of supplies you, uh, you provided for the women who have gone to prison? They're out already. Um, well, both. Uh, Inside uh, prison, too? Mm -hmm. oh. There's uh, different opportunities throughout the year to send... Uh, Items that have been approved by the state, like uh, body wash, um, you know, T-shirts, uh, certain things for certain events. And I help with those to get that stuff up there. And when women are coming home, 
uh, will have whatever they need for the first couple of weeks, hygiene, um, uh, pajamas, some slippers, a robe, because people don't know everything is, if you've been down for 10, 15, 20 years, you don't remember what it's like to go from you know the, the, the bathroom to your room because everything is in this little box when you're in prison. And I like to think, what are they gonna need in order to adjust comfortably? Oh, I see. Uh, what was the food like in prison? It's not for human consumption some days. Oh, good. It's terrible. Uh, it, uh, it's lacking. There's really no nutrients. There's no nutritional value in anything that they, is served there. Uh, and it should be that way, huh? It, well, if they could put some nutritional value into the, the, the food, it might help people function better because it's, it's it's not, it's gotten much worse over the years. Nice, I didn't know that. <laughs> really horrible, and if you imagine, you know, the budget for food for an inmate is $3.19 a day, but they get $106,000 a year for each individual that is incarcerated. So this is a very small percentage of the budget that goes towards feeding people. Yeah, and, uh, and you were around all type of criminals, I see. Mm -hmm. Like done all kind of crime. Some crime you had never heard of. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. And so the women who are out and that you're working with, do they still get a feeling of despair? Some of them. I think, uh, I think everybody has a little bit still left in them because there's still a, a, a permanent connection with, with that experience that doesn't go away. You can be as happy as you want to be and move on as fast as you want to, but that bond, it, it's, it's always going to be there. Did you resent your situation while you were in prison? No. You weren't angry at yourself? No. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I was angry at myself, but not at the time I received. I was really trying to use it for, for something. I didn't know what it was going to be for, but I would always pray that I would have an opportunity to use it to try and make up for what I had done. And so you, um, so you are a Christian now, right? Christian conservative. Were you a Christian before you went in prison? Went to prison? A backsliding Christian for sure. What's a backsliding? <laughs> um, uh, like a non-practicing Christian. I, 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 I grew up Christian, uh, but I definitely wasn't following any kind of footsteps of any kind of Jesus when I was running around on the streets. And so uh, you follow Jesus now? Mm hmm You are? And what does that mean? How do you know you're following him, and what does that mean? Because I, I love everybody. I love the people that wish harm on me, the ones that want me to just drop dead. I care about their well-being just as much as I do the women that are my personal friends inside of the prison. Um, I do that regularly just as a part of my life because uh, I don't think people listen anymore, so I have to just lead by example. I'm just trying to live my life as close to the right as I can so that people can see and know the way I move that that's, that's Christian because Amazing. words don't mean nothing anymore. And so... Are you surprised that your despair did not go away once you became a Christian? Um, yes, because it's really, it, I know it creeps in on me. It, it, it creeps in. Yeah. Um, it's something I, I it's an attack. Yeah. It's, it's, it's every morning trying to get me to be less and less productive uh, and forget what, what the mission at hand is. Did you think that once you became a Christian that the feeling of despair would disappear? You would no longer have it? Um, no, I, I didn't. I don't think anything works like magic that way. Actually, like after I was baptized, it was really crazy. <laughs> it, was, it was like a war broke out. Um, I got, actually, I think it was just a couple years after I was baptized that I went to prison, actually. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Whoa, all <laughs> in the name. That's amazing. Um, do... Do you know if women, oh, I want to ask, why do, when people go to prison, why do they always come back and be a Christian? 
or come back as a Christian. What happens? Does Jesus visit the prison or something? What made them become Christian? <laughs> he does regularly, I think. Uh, when you have been deprived and completely separated from, you know, your loved ones, your life, your choices, it gives you a really, really good time out, a really good period of time to reflect. Right. I can imagine. And, I mean, if I could have had longer, I probably would have opted for that because I, I really needed to be forced to sit down and deal with myself. And that's when I knew I, I, I didn't make it through that sentence without being dependent on the Lord. So this is the least I can do. Really? Uh, how do you deal with the fear you have? I, don't, you I, I, I try not to even have the fear. It, it, because, I mean, what what can be formed against me? I mean, me? the inner fear that comes and you, and you have nothing to do with it. It's just there. Oh, I just sit with it, shake it off. It's going to go away because feelings pass. I learned that during prison. Feelings are not permanent. They go away. Yeah. They're not even what the, it's just a, a fleeting moment. It's not anything that I can uh, make permanent decisions on based on. Um. So, do you believe you can have perfect peace? Perfect? I mean, it's an attain. I, I, I would like it to be a goal. I don't know if I can, not independently, no. I think, like, in my relationship with Jesus, I could reach that point. There's still a lot of things I got to let go of and... Um, a little cleaning up in my backyard before I think <laughs> I could reach that point. But I think anything, all things are possible in a relationship with Jesus. And um, why do you call your relationship with Jesus but not with God? Oh, I have a relationship with God. I mean, that's, it, I think of it as the same. Well, Je Jesus is just like my point man, my, uh, my contact with, you know, <laughs> with the Trinity. That's, that's my point person. Oh, okay. um, Meaning what? Uh, that's who I talk to. Or you that's talk who to I, Jesus? Right, or bring my problems to. Or, and does he help you? Mm -hmm. He talked back? Um, one time, <laughs> one time I was really freaking out uh, because I just felt like, it, it was almost two years ago, I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I, don't, I can't complete a project. I, I can't, yeah. I'm not helping them, these women. What do I do? And all I heard was, can you just finish one song? Can you go Christmas Carol? Just do one song. You can finish that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we went and Christmas Carol in front of the prison in the, in the rain, about 10 of us. And, and the exact people that we were specifically worried about, she saw us. She was able to see us. And I didn't even know we could see, you know, even living in there for five years, I didn't know that was the street. And yeah. somehow... She was able to see us. And so um, prison life made you better? Mm hmm It made you better? In what way? Uh, I was very inconsiderate before I went to prison. I was not aware of the impact my decisions had on other people. So going to prison and having to work like in a hive mind, knowing that every move I made would impact seven other people, my roommates, uh, made me have to think, I have to respect other people's property and time and uh, everything, just them in general, because I really didn't take those things into consideration before. The people that you um, violated by way of crime, are they still around? Uh, well, she's, she's, nobody died, so I'm, I'm Guessing she's still <laughs> around. Are you afraid of running into her sometime? No. Well, I'm. I'm hoping one day I can like fully apologize, uh, but afraid, no. Okay. The person that you were with, are they around? Are they in prison or out of prison? Oh, he's home. He's out now. He's out. And are you afraid of running into him? Sometime? Yes. You are. Yes. Why? I. I well. Yeah, I just don't, I, I would prefer not to, you know, um, interact. It's just probably not healthy or good for either one of us. So if you ran into him, you think you'd get back with him? No, no, sir. Oh. No. So you don't love him? Um, no. 
And, but what are you, what is your concern if you you just don't want to mm -hmm. what? No, I, I would like I I would like to avoid that conflict if there is one. I mean, I'm sure he's moved on with his life. Uh, I just I don't want to do it. I, I would avoid that route if I could. Amazing. So in your organization, is it a group of you guys or just you? There's three of us. Yeah, that, that making all this happen. Nice. Um, do you want to be free? Oh, let me ask this first. Did you commit those crimes? As, I, yes, because I was an active participant by not stopping. And, and did you decide on your own to commit those crimes? Mm hmm And why would you decide to do something like that to yourself? I didn't care about myself. You didn't care about yourself? Not at so all. So you said, I don't care about myself, I'm going to go and commit crimes. Mm -hmm. I don't care about anybody or anything. Uh, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Really? Is it possible that it wasn't you, but something else influencing you to do that? And you thought it was you? Yes. Because I, I for some reason, I'm susceptible to manipulation and... Uh, I, I have been influenced pretty easily in the past. By other people? People, movements, uh, uh, ideologies, um, music. Are you a weak person? Uh, I have been. A weak person. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that, yes, there are people influencing you, but something inside of you was influencing you to do those things, and it wasn't you? It's possible, yes. It's possible? I think it was a great partnership between myself and my demons. Your demons? Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by that? Um, I just feel like there's, there's things, thoughts that get in your head, and that's all it takes. Yeah. Once that thought is in your head, it's, 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 it's a, if you're not in a position to adequately battle with that, if you don't have the tools, if you haven't been exercising your spirit, then they're going to get you. And so you were aware that these thoughts were making you do this? Yes, sir? Uh, I wasn't paying attention to anything back then. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't, I, I just wanted to do bad stuff and make a lot of money. I loved money. I had no idea how influential that was in my life. Even though you said your father, your parents had a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? You weren't my broke. My parents were, were, were financially stable. And so you were financially fine. Mm -hmm. But yet you felt like you needed more money? Yes. Why? I don't know. It, 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 I really, but I really did like it a lot. <laughs> and I didn't fully understand that money is the root of all evil until the last few years of my life. And so was it because you were spoiled and didn't have to make your own way that you felt like you just wanted more? I probably had a, a large part to do with it. Yeah, I didn't have to work for a whole lot. Yeah. That's amazing. Huh? Mm -hmm. Did they apologize to you? Your parents were spoiling you like that? Mm, not that I recall. I wouldn't even like have that expectation or want to put them in that position. I'm sorry? I really wouldn't um, even put them in the position to have to apologize Why to not? me. Because I've already done so much. I've already... They, they, they've been supportive. Uh, yeah, maybe an apology would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with an apology? Nothing. It's actually, it's a so, good thing, right? So why shouldn't they apologize to you because they set you up like that? Maybe because maybe I wouldn't get it. Maybe they wouldn't give it to me. So I'll just say I don't want them to give it to me before <laughs> they can not do it. Yeah. Do you love your mother? I do. You love your father too? Mm -hmm. And have you forgiven your mother for what she did to you? We're working on it. Have you forgiven your mother for what she's done to you? <sighs> not, not, not all the way yet. Have you forgiven your mother for what she's done to you? No. I'm sorry? No. <laughs> I can't hear. I haven't. Your Honor, I can't hear the, the, the client. I haven't. Yeah. And, and it's, why not? It's really heavy. Um, it's heavy. It is. In what way? Uh, because I don't want to. I don't want to have um, 
like, it's not an irreconcilable difference. You know, we can reconcile. Uh, but reconciling is not going to make you free. <sighs> You've tried that, and that's not working. It's not. But where we are in the process, we're definitely, you know, talking again and um, communicating on a more open level. But, but you're not just, communicating with her. You're not forgiving her. Not, not you're like playing another role. I don't like this role. <laughs> I really want to graduate so already. So why don't you forgive her? It, I, I mean, I try, and it just no, comes haven't. back. I haven't tried very hard. Huh? You told your mother, "I forgive you for what you've done to me." <sighs> no. So you haven't tried. Is that it's going to be that easy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to panic. Uh, you starting to panic right now? No. Which is either being in prison for five years or facing your mother? Facing my mother, def most de <laughs> definitely, most definitely. <laughs> and why is that? Because she loves me. No, she doesn't. She doesn't. If she loved you, why is it so hard for you to forgive her? Oh, this is a hard one. Uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> That's a hard one. Um, well, maybe she's loved me the best way she's equipped to to do I'm sorry maybe that that she's loved me as as best of her abilities allow her to love me uh that's true she doesn't have love she's doing the best she could mm. something like that yeah so knowing that why don't you forgive her did you know she did not have love not I, I, I wasn't aware until, again, very recently, I've started, you know, to listen to people and pay attention to what's going on. Because before, it was like I had blinders on. It was just about me. Yeah. So having to actually think about things critically and understand that hurt people hurt people. And it's not, there, there's always different layers to this whole onion. There's always more. Yeah. And I have to play my part. And, and, and Will you ever be free within if you don't go and forgive her? No. So you love your hell? No, no, no. <laughs> you want to come out of the real jail that you're in? Mm -hmm. You're in prison in here. I am. So why don't you forgive her so you can get out of that prison? Because oh, it would be a lot easier to move forward if I wasn't incarcerated mentally. <laughs> right. Um, and in knowing that, why don't you face her and forgive her? Well, she's on the way home, so I can... On the way home? What do you mean? I, I mean, I, could, I will probably stop on my way home now. Oh, I see what you said. So you may face her after this? Mm hmm And is it sweating, nervous, thinking about having to do that? No, no. What are you afraid of? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Nothing. I, maybe my of being free, because I'm uh, so used to, to being attached to something negative. Yeah. What is it like for you living in your hell? All in the name of Jesus. It's better than it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than it was. I mean, um, every day is some, something opens a little bit more. Today's a little bit, a lot more. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, the awareness of the part that I play in in my own life. You know, these are my decisions. These are, I have to take responsibility. So this is all like, uh, it's a lot of stuff at once. And why do you think that they're your responsibility? Uh, that you're responsible for that? Well, because I have to take the moves, make the moves and make the decisions to, to move fast, move past these kind of things, to um, open myself up to, to healing and uh, bridging these gaps in my mind so that I don't stay stuck in a loop constantly for another, you know, year, five years, decade. I don't have that many left, so I can't. You in prison for how long? Five. Five years. For five. How, are you able to say how old you are now? If you don't want to, you don't have to. Sure. Yeah, I'm 41 now. Oh, you're 41. Mm -hmm. You look younger than 41. Thank you. Yeah. That arsenic in the water. <laughs> <It's> preservative. <laughs> um, 
Did you forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother? I don't even think I dealt with that. Why not? I think because I, 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 I protect. I, I don't I don't like to blame him <laughs> for stuff. And you know, he did play a part, so I, I don't know why I always want to insulate him from um <clears throat> responsibility. You tried to protect him from your mother? I think from um from everything. How would you feel as a kid when you would see your mother abusing him? Well, they, I think they, 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 they were both pretty good at it. But it didn't, uh, it didn't, um, I don't know, I always felt like crap. <laughs> it was pretty crappy. And you see how hard it was for your father to deal with your mother, right? What do you see about that? Um, that there was a lot of manipulation. And I would love to do whatever I can to not be that. that. Are you surprised you became like your mother? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Sometimes it's very bothersome. <laughs> Sometimes I'll talk and I'm like, oh, who said that? Yeah. Who, who was, whose words was that? That was hers. Yeah, it um, became like her. Yes, and, and, and my, uh, uh, my tone, my, my facial expressions, I'll, I'll think that it's, it's her. Yeah. It's her. But then I do the same. Yeah, it is her. <laughs> and you didn't, you didn't want to become like your mother, right? No. It, you become like what you hate. Well, they say that's what happens, right? Yeah. And you're not going to overcome it until you forgive her for what she's done to you. How did you know? <laughs> Every human being has the same problem. It's that's, nothing new. That's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I snorted. So. You're not going to be free until you face her and forgive her. Hey, mother, I'm sorry for hating you for what you've done to me. I realize now you can help yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why you became like her. It's not going to change until you forgive her. And don't ask for forgiveness. God will forgive you. Mm -hmm. Because your mother's evil and she's not going to apologize. <sighs> she loved controlling you and your father. And the cat and the dog. <laughs> but you're not going to be free until you... How can you love God and you, mm -hmm. have not, and you don't love your parents? Or you got to forgive them and that's what love is, not resenting. It's not that you agree with it, mm -hmm. you just don't resent them for it because they couldn't help it. What do you think about that? I'm happy. <laughs> I'm glad you told me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to be really busy for the rest, <laughs> the rest of the afternoon. And you've got to forgive your father for not protecting you from him. Mm -hmm. He married a woman that was just like his mother. He couldn't deal with his mother. <laughs> <laughs> so he became the boy, and your, mo your mother became his mother, and he didn't know how to handle that hell in her. He loved you. That's why he stood by you in, in that way, but he just didn't know how to protect you from your mother. He was afraid of her. He hated her. Wow. You've been watching this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's just, that's, yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. That makes sense, huh? Mm-hmm. And do you know why it makes sense? Because that's the human condition, or...? It's because God is speaking to you in the voice's voice, and he allowing you to see the truth. That's why it makes sense. I can't make you see the truth, but he is, the light is shining. That's the voice of God. He allowing you to see. That makes sense. But if he didn't allow it, you wouldn't see it. The average person that's not wanting to overcome their hell... They wouldn't, they wouldn't understand what we're saying. They wouldn't accept it. But because you want to, the light is the voice of God. He's allowing you to see. 
And once you go and forgive, don't have no expectation from them. Don't expect them to apologize or to admit anything. You forgive them because the reason you're still in your hell is that you resent them. So you're living in the darkness of your imagination. And you're not going to be free from that jail until you forgive. That's why God said, go and forgive. And I will forgive you before you enter into the kingdom. Then you'll be free. Mm. Then I could get a lot of stuff done. Yes. Amazing. Huh? <laughs> yes. And that feeling of despair and everything would disappear. Because that's the nature of the devil. Mm-hmm. You're not you. It is. It's dark. Yeah. And when you leave here, Satan will try to talk you out mm -hmm. of facing your mother. Oh, you're going to hurt her feelings. She's going to get mad. She's going to get But whatever she does, that's on her. It has nothing to do with you. She's just in denial about herself. She doesn't want to admit she's wrong, right? So you just watch her act out. Let's say you're talking to her and she get mad or she start crying or she fall out and die. You just say, oh, mama dead. What the? She dead. <laughs> <laughs> but you will go free. Mm. That, that makes sense? Mm -hmm. And this Jesus thing that you think you believe in, you believe about him, but you don't believe in him yet. But you will when you forgive. You just have the intellectual knowledge about him, the ideas about him, and ideas don't work. You want to know him. Mm -hmm. That's why it hasn't worked for you. Roadblocks. I'm sorry? I was another roadblock. I knew yeah. it's something, but I knew that there's, there's, there is something. Yeah. Uh, like with the even with the form forming of the organization, uh, you know, a year later, I was like, oh, we forgot to lay the cornerstone. <laughs> and I started working backwards to yeah. try and, uh, you know. Now you can lay, once you forgive, you'll be able to lay this cornerstone. Stone. Uh, one other thing is, do you realize you have never done anything wrong? You're not guilty of anything. quiet in here. I'm sorry? <laughs> it's quiet in here. <laughs> um, how, how so? You're taking responsibility for something you did not do. Physically, you carry out the act, but you haven't done anything wrong. You were influenced and didn't know you were being influenced. You thought you were the thoughts and the feelings and the anger and the, the stuff that was influencing you. The thoughts made you do it, but they were not your own thoughts. And as a result of that, God has never judged you for anything because you're not guilty of anything. The devil is judging you and condemning you, but you think it's you. It's not you. You were influenced. The things you did have done, you didn't want to do them. Something made you do them. It was that thing that made a home in your imagination and in your emotions, which are not your own. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your body. But you've been thinking that you were, you identified with it, and you carried out those things thinking that it was you. The real you have never commit a sin or anything. You're not those things you think you are. The devil is still deceiving you. You got to take responsibility because he wants you to think that it's you, and it's not. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, that's so deep. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true. Christ came and he wiped away all our sin. It's impossible for us to sin. Our sins have been taken care of. Mm -hmm. We are free. But the devil, because he, do, he made a home in you, he makes you think that you're not free. And no one ever told you, you know what, well, that's not you. Stop being angry. Stop mm -hmm. thinking that you, you could have been free a long time ago. But you have never done anything wrong. You're neither a sinner nor a saint. You're neither free or enslaved. You're nothing but the light. But you just don't see the light because you believe the darkness of the imagination. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. No such thing as good thoughts or bad thoughts. They're all lies. And you've been identifying with them. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That makes sense? Mm-hmm. It does. In what way? Because there's a, there's always been a lot of negative thoughts, always. And they have never been yours. The positive ones are not yours, so-called positive, and the negative ones are not yours. You remember in the Bible when Paul said, I've been trying to fix myself, paraphrase, and I realized that the things I don't want to do, I do them, and the things I want to do, I can't. I realized something made a home in me. That's what he was talking about. Mm. And that came when you resented your mother as a little kid. You resented her for what she was imposing her will on you, her evil, and she turned you away from the father and recreated you in the hell that she's in, in her image. Wow. That's a lot of work. (laughs) That's a lot of work. What do you mean that's a lot of work? Like that. You can't just do that overnight, you know? That takes a lot of effort to turn something like that. I don't understand what you're saying. Like, um... (laughs) Like, she had to really put some effort into that. She couldn't help her. Her nature is evil. She had to put no effort into it. She was driven by the same evil that was driving you because the evil that's in you came from her. Mm. That's all she could do because that's her nature. And if you don't forgive her, it'll be your nature. Mm-hmm. And that's all you'll be able to do is evil. And that's not... And you'll what, call yeah. it good. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be horrible. <laughs> that would yeah. be such a lie. That would be horrible. Yeah. Mm. Wow. What the... <laughs> Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, this is crazy. I can't wait to tell the wow. <laughs> this is important. Thank you. No, you want to be free. That's why you're hearing and receiving the truth. And it's the truth that you're welcoming inside of you and it's making you free by allowing you to see. And that's all you want to do is see. And seeing will erase the darkness. But I want to encourage you to stop saying, I did this, and I did that, and I got to take this from you. There is no I. There never was an I. Stop using the language because you're praying to the devil. Okay. And language is so important. Yeah. Like, I'm just now learning that too, you know, you a did. single word. A single word. It, it, it can and make or break. That's what the break. devil does. He used language to keep you in hell. Mm-hmm. That's why they, these people use racism and sexism and mm-hmm. all the isms. Because they're covering up hell, and so that the devil can't, don't want you to see that it's just an evil spirit. It's not the language that they use, it's to cover up the devil. Mm, mm, mm. And there's so many isms yes. right now. All isms, because the devil uses that to keep you from seeing the reality. I would battle is spiritual, it has no isms. Right. It's right. good or evil. Mm. And until now, you've been. Believe in evil. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of of evil. I mean, oh, I'm reflecting on the course of my whole lifetime. That's a lot. Yes. <sighs> but, I mean, all, not all for nothing. It it. it I think it's important that I'm able to recognize it now. Yes, absolutely. The fact that you can recognize it is changing already. And you are overcoming evil. That's what you're overcoming. Things are changing right now. And as it's changing, there's nothing to go back to. Mm-hmm. You can't go back to that anymore because the light is destroying the darkness, mm-hmm. the light of God. Right. Can't unsee what I see. Can't unknow what I know. That's right. And so all you have to do now is to stay with that and just watch. Watch those thoughts 
know that they're not yours, those emotions that come with the thoughts, it's pure hell. Do not believe them. They are not your emotions, and emotions are evil because they come from an evil place. There's no such thing as good emotions. Don't let anyone tell you that. Because they'll build you up to pretend to be good, and then they'll tear you down. As soon as you're feeling good, you're feeling bad. Now you're feeling good, now you're feeling bad. And that's why you want to jump off a bridge. Mm. Or go beat up some other woman. <laughs> oh, and he don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm old, they can't be. <laughs> that's right. No, no, I mean, that's wrong. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Anything that I've said about that you disagree with or, or not clear to you? No, I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I'm recognizing it, and I, I agree. Yeah. That's amazing. Huh? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I wasn't expecting, you know, therapy time. I wasn't either. <laughs> I thought we were gonna be art. You gonna be some jail woman that we were gonna be fighting with. No. And I see. <laughs> but that's how you come out of this prison that you live in your imagination. Those are not your thoughts. They've never been your thought. You have never done anything wrong. And God has never judged you. He loves you with the real love, not the mama's love, not that emotional crap. He loves you with the light, with the real love. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to, have you heard about my silent prayer at all? Mm -mm. Uh, I want you to go to my, and we'll give you a little paper, but go to my YouTube channel, and I want you to start doing the silent prayer, www.silentprayer.video, and stop thinking that you're on your knees praying to Jesus. You're praying to the devil. That's why your prayers haven't been answered, because you've been praying to the devil, thinking, because mm -hmm. the ideas about Jesus is just an idea. They come from the devil, too and what you've been taught, mm -hmm. intellectual stuff, right? But you need to be still. I recommend you be still and know him. Mm -hmm. he got, he's bringing, these are your thoughts, which are not your own. He's bringing you out of there. And all you have to do is watch those thoughts and just know that's not me. Those are not my feelings. And eventually the darkness will be gone. And you will have a clear mind and you will be free. I'm ready. Nice. So listen, I got to put you on the hot. So your work, mm -hmm. your assignment, mm -hmm. if you decide to take it, you got to go and forgive your mother. Mm -hmm. And don't let the devil talk you out of it. And whatever she says, that's on her. You say, hey, I want to forgive you for what you've done. I realize now i become like you. I don't want to be like you. What the? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry for resenting you. I can help myself. So I see now that you can help yourself. Her mother did it to her. That's where she get it from. Did you know that uh, Satan was the woman's God? Really? Are you <laughs> How so? <laughs> Why do you think uh, the women have so much hell in them? I don't know. I've always kind of wondered. You know, from a very young age, I kind of wondered what's really going on here. With the women, why they had so much hell. Mm -hmm. It came from their, their God, the devil. When, uh, when Eve believed the serpent, mm -hmm. the serpent became her God. And she could no longer believe her husband. She went to obey him because she believed into the serpent. He became her God. And when Adam believed the woman, she became his God. And that made men subject to women. That's why men are afraid of women. It's, she, she is their God. But when you go and forgive mama, that spirit came down through mama of Eve, right? When you go and forgive mama, the roles are switch, And that's when life begins. Wow. The woman would no longer be the man's God, and the serpent would no longer be the woman's God, and everything would change. But Satan is your daddy. Man. <laughs> he just, I, that's why all that hell is in the woman the hell passes through the woman that's why Satan pushed the woman in the forefront in the homes and the schools and government and everywhere because he know through her he can work his hell imagine the prison yeah crazy. absolutely crazy. a lot of people say all the time you know that all the guards the, all the staff should be women in a women's facility and I try and explain to them no, yep. 
you have no idea what you what you're saying. It, it would never work. That's right. Ever. That's right. And I don't really know how to explain it more thoroughly. I mean, maybe now so. Yeah. Now that you're waking up, you see how to explain it. Mm -hmm. It will happen naturally. Mm -hmm. Because the Spirit of the Lord will speak through you. He will use your mouth to put the truth out there. And that's the goal. That's what I've always wanted, is, is to be able to just be the vessel. And that's why you're receiving it now. Amazing, huh? So, I got to put you on the hot seat. Okay. <laughs> this is not the hot seat already. <laughs> Gets hotter. <laughs> so I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Yes. The hot seat. What is a woman? Uh, a adult human female. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? Yes. Does a bear shit in the woods? Yes. Is it ever okay to call a woman fat? Yes. True or false, abortion is worse than slavery? Yes. Should felons be allowed to vote? No. I, I mean, hold on. Um, um, once they're, not while they're incarcerated, maybe after they're off paperwork. Is the earth flat or round? Uh, round. Are you a feminist? No. Does a chicken have lips? No. <laughs> do, do educated women make for good wives and mothers? No. Would you ever run for office no. in the future? No. <laughs> Did you have fun? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I absolutely appreciate it. It was amazing. I did not expect any of this to happen. Me neither. That's what made it even more amazing. Tell the folks how to get your organization, whatever you want to put out there. Uh, if anybody would um, like to know more about Woman to Woman, uh, our website is www.womaniiwoman.org. Uh, there's a lot of details on the website. We're active on social media platforms. We always need stamps because they're expensive now and we correspond with a lot of people. So stamps are always appreciated. Uh, I guess money too, but yeah. you know. And when the world attack you, mm -hmm. because they are going to come out that you're conservative. Now you return it to the father. They're going to attack you, mm -hmm. but forgive them. They can't see. Just like you can see just before now, you were not able to see, right? They had the same problem. So it's not them. It's the spirit of evil that working through them. Forgive them and don't fight with them. Just forgive them. That makes sense? It does. I wish you well. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget that the Fall Estate is now on Locals.com. So click in the link for the description there of the uh, video and continue to support our work. We got a lot to do. I do appreciate it. Like, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, check out the merch, and let me hear from you. Thank you again for tuning in. And thank you for coming. Amazing, huh? It was amazing. <laughs> wow.